Playboy Cardi recently got this tattoo and a lot of people are going crazy. But what if I told you that he has another tattoo that nobody is talking about and the meaning behind it might shock you even more? You're going to want to look at this. From upside down crosses on each shoulder, a devilish demonic depiction on his hand, even a canceled out cross on his stomach. But of all his tattoos, one caught my attention the most. And to the unassuming eye, this might just look like some evil goat with devilish horns. But when I saw this star, it hit me. Have y'all ever seen this before? Take a closer look. There's the goat that he has and there's the star. What does this statue actually symbolize? Well, in order to know that, you're going to have to get to know this guy, Lucian Greaves, founder of the Satanic Temple. The same man, when asked about the core beliefs of Satanism, said this. The way in which we contextualize our coming away from supernaturalism and embracing blasphemy to us, that's the very essence of Satanism. We couldn't call it something else. Coming away from supernaturalism and embracing blasphemy. In other words, turning your back on Jesus and embracing all forms of blasphemy. So what exactly is the Satanic Temple and why is Playboy Cardi getting all these tattoos and so excited to tell you about it? Well, let's break it down. All right, look, so instead of me trying to explain to you exactly what the Satanic Temple is, how about I just let the founder, Harvard educated <laughs> Lucian Greaves. Yes, his name is really Lucian Greaves and he has like one eye or something. I don't know. I can't make this stuff up like this is literally out of a movie. Let me just have him explain to you what it means because he's the person who created it. So watch this short clip and let me warn you, he does a lot of talking, but you don't really be saying much, but at towards the end of this clip, he says something extremely important. So pay attention. All right. So let's start with what the definition in your mind and your heart is of Satanism. Is that how you would even reference it? Satanism? Well, yeah, yeah, of course. We, okay. We're uh, religiously identified as Satanists. And I think the confusion and the leap people have to make is that they view religion usually in strictly theistic terms that you must believe in a literal supernatural deity in order to be a religion. But that's, that's not accurate in, in our, in our assumptions about religion. And, you know, there are a lot of secular Jews in the United States who still engage in religious practices, holidays, that type of thing, have that sense of community and culture uh, in their ethics grounded in the mythology of their religion without viewing it in actual supernatural terms. And Satanism, I think, is, is similar to that. It's not something we feel like we can arbitrarily pick and choose. And people always ask once they know that we're not theistic, why we can't be something less inflammatory than Satanists. But, you know, it's not something we feel we've chosen. It's kind of chosen us given our cultural background the way in which we contextualize our coming away from supernaturalism and embracing blasphemy to us, that's the very essence of Satanism. We couldn't call it something else. I don't know if you caught that, but he says coming away from supernaturalism and embracing blasphemy for us, that is the very essence of Satanism. And that's huge because what we know is Matthew 12 Verse 31, it says, so I tell you, this is Jesus talking. This is in red. All right. It says, so I tell you, every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which will never be forgiven. Anyone who speaks against the son of man can be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven either in this world or in the world to come. So don't you find it extremely interesting? That the essence of Satanism, this is from the horse's mouth, the very essence of Satanism is to embrace blasphemy. Don't you find that extremely interesting? Because what do we know about the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is here to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. So much so that Jesus has made a way for us to have eternal life so that when we pass away, when we leave this body, we can still have an eternal life in heaven with him. 
But on the flip side, we know that there's a different agenda that this world has. And Satan has a kingdom on this world. He is a ruler of this earth. So it would make sense that the core essence of Satanism would be to embrace all forms of blasphemy because once you commit the the unforgivable sin blasphemy against the holy spirit there's no hope for you so the more and more that you can practice and the more and more that you become comfortable embracing this blasphemy as a satanist as a member of the satanic temple the more and more of the chance that you will commit the unforgivable sin and that's exactly what satan wants for you because satan the bible tells us satan is here to steal kill and destroy so the fact that they're just so out in the open with it is extremely interesting all right look if you have any hint of discernment in your mind then you already know what this is you you already know how much of a fraud this whole satanic temple thing is but i want to show y'all just one more clip just to let y'all know that you have nothing to worry about as Christians, we are on the winning side. As believers of Jesus, we are on the living, the, the winning side. And that is a fact. So watch this clip, super short clip. The interviewer is asking Lucian about <laughs> Lucian. That's such a like, listen, this is a joke. <laughs> this whole thing is a joke. The interviewer is, is asking Lucian his opinion about the afterlife. Take a listen to what Lucian says. I don't believe in an afterlife. I I believe, you know, our brains are where our consciousness revive, re resides. And then once it's once it's over, it's over. We have to live our best lives now. All right. So check me out. This dude just said that he does not believe in an afterlife. Let me ask all a question. Why in the world would you ever put your faith in a religion that does not give you a guarantee or at least a path to having an existence apart from this life. You know what I'm trying to say? Because look, Christianity, having a relationship with Jesus, this is the only religion, this is the only way that, that you have a guaranteed savior. Other religions don't have a guaranteed savior. Jesus is our savior because he gives us a guaranteed path to eternal life by putting our faith into him. Other religions, you have to do certain works in order to be made righteous, in order to be good enough to get into heaven. But through Christianity, through Jesus, we have a path that we can be made righteous and we're guaranteed into heaven for eternity. So why, <laughs> why would you put your faith in a religion when actually the satanic temple is not a religion? They want to they want to say that they're a religion. They want to reap the benefits of, of being a religion from a government and, and a tax standpoint. But at the core of what the satanic temple is, it's about putting your faith in yourself. It's about trusting your own understanding. It's about not leaning on God's understanding, but it's about leaning on the knowledge that you have because you know right from wrong. That's essentially what the Satanic Temple is trying to teach you. And to people who are non-believers, that probably sounds really good. That probably sounds really good because you got to understand this, like Satan, he's not going to come up to you and he's not going to like try to scare you. He's going to smooth talk you to death. He's going to finesse you to death. He's going to make it sound sweet. He's going to make it sound good. But at the end of the day, Satan has no substance because when you pass away, you're going to hell. So why would you want to follow that? Why would you want to follow that line of thinking? So in Playboy Cardi's case, all you people who are fans of him, all you people who are enjoying his music, all, all, all you people who are allowing him to deposit his satanic energy into your spirit you're going to be on a one-way train downhill with him to the lake of fire because that is your only hope you have no hope in satan because satan's primary goal is to kill you is to steal from you steal your joy steal your happiness steal all the goodness from you so that he can send you to hell and you might have fun on earth but how long are we actually going to be on earth? We're not going to be on earth for that long. So put your faith in Jesus. So this story reminds me of like the whole Playboy Cardi thing, because this dude, it just seems like he has so many demons inside of him that are just thriving. Right. So Mark five, verse one, this is when Jesus heals the demon possessed man. It says, so they arrived at the other side of the lake 
in the region of Gersenes. Y'all gonna roast me for that. I don't, I, can, I don't know how to pronounce that. Y'all can roast me in the comments if you want. <laughs> when Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out of the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackled, as he often was, he snapped from the chains from his wrists and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day after night, he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him and bowed low before him with a shriek. He screamed, why are you interfering with me? Jesus, son of the most high. See, even these demons know who Jesus is. In the name of God, I beg you, do not torture me. These, these are the demons talking. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion because there are many of us inside this man. This is how I feel about Playboy Cardi. My name is Legion because there are many of us inside this man. Then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send him to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send me, send us into the pigs. The demons will, they want it. The demons want to live in anything. They do not care. They do not care. They said, send us into the pigs. So Jesus gave them permission and the evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs about 2000. They entered 2000 pigs and they were eventually drowned in the water. This is how I feel about Playboy Cardi. I feel like he has so many demons inside of him. And yeah, he's he's thriving. He's living. He's successful. And y'all might like his music, but it's all demon inspired. And it's going to get to a point where there's no turning back. And I feel like, sadly enough, I think Playboy Cardi's already at that point where it's no turning back because the whole goal of this satanic temple is to get you to commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit so that you have no pathway to heaven and that you are eternally damned to hell. And I have a feeling that that might be the case with Playboy Cardi. So my question to you is, if you're listening to his music, why are you still listening to his music when you know what he stands for? Get in my comments. Let me know what y'all think. Subscribe. I'm out.